The purpose of this video is to tell a brief history of IKEA. Acronym comprising the initials of the founder's name, Ingvar Kamprad, the farm where he grew up, Elmtard, and his home parish, Agnard in Saland, South Sweden. When he was 17 years old, his father gave him a gift for succeeding in his studies. The gift was used to establish his own business. By the 1940s, Ingvar's business had become successful. He began to advertise in local newspapers. He uses the local milk van to deliver products to the nearby train stations. In 1948, furniture is introduced into the IKEA range. Pressure from its competitors caused suppliers to boycott IKEA. IKEA begins designing its own furniture. The furniture is produced by local manufacturers in the forest close to Ingvar Kamprad's home. In the 1950s, the founder of IKEA sees the opportunity to sell furniture on a larger scale using a catalogue. The IKEA catalogue that we know today is born. A big development of IKEA also occurred. For the first time, customers can see and touch IKEA home furnishings before ordering them. Exploration of flat packaging began when one of the first IKEA co-workers removes the legs from a table so that they will fit into a car to avoid damage during transit. In 1973, the first store outside Scandinavia was opened just outside Zurich, Switzerland, followed by a rapid expansion in Germany, starting with IKEA Munich in 1974. Germany still remains the largest IKEA market today. In 1993, IKEA reaches 114 stores in 25 countries. In the year 2000, e-shopping is launched in Sweden and Denmark. Since then, many other markets have started offering online shopping at IKEA. The sliding value of the US dollar put Kamprad ahead as the richest person in the world, earning 23 billion US dollars as of March 2010. IKEA rewards all of its 12,400 staff in the US with a bicycle each. The bikes were distributed to staff at its 37 stores in the country. You can do so much in 10 minutes time. 10 minutes, once gone, are gone for good. Divide your life into 10 minute units and sacrifice as few of them as possible in meaningless activity. When he was turning 80, he said, I have lots of things to do. I don't have time for dying.